So that competition review made it two big reports this week, and it's only Tuesday. The other, Joe Hockey's Rethink Tax discussion paper, landed yesterday with a potentially huge implications for investors, especially with such low interest rates. Well, fund manager Roger Montgomery is with me in the studio. And uh, as I said, drowning in reports this week. But I, I yes. want to pick up on the idea of possibly dumping dividend imputation. Can you remind everyone what that is and, and why it might work? So it was introduced uh, to get rid of double taxation and give investors who receive dividends uh, a credit for the tax that was already paid by companies. And so there's a 30% tax credit. Now what's been happening of course is the baby boomers who are retiring in pension phase in their super, they're receiving enormous credits and it's putting a burden on government. So the government's looking at this. Now I, by the way, let me say this, I think it's political suicide um, for them to do it. Um, Having said that, though... For, because of investors, not so much because of companies? Because of in, for investors, yes. it would be politically um, suicidal, particularly as baby boomers are now more reliant than ever on income from their investments and any tax benefits that exist. And they've been forced into a tax structure, which is superannuation, because it was made more attractive to do so. Mm -hmm. So they're reliant on, on those benefits that accrue to them. But let me say this, the reaction from the market, the reaction from fund managers, doesn't stand basic arithmetic scrutiny and so what I've heard some of the arguments I've heard for example is it'll be bad for the market because there'll be no reason for companies to pay the dividends anymore if there are no franking credits and therefore that's bad for the market and bad for stock prices at precisely the time everyone's migrated from cash into the stock market. I've also been told that it's bad for capital allocation and it's inefficient um, and I actually think some very basic arithmetic is going to I think cut through all of the noise if a company can generate a high rate of return on its equity, and my argument only relates to those companies that can, mm. then that company will actually generate more wealth for its shareholders if it retains the profits and compounds those profits at a high rate of return on equity. So a company generating a 15% return on equity, if I buy and sell those shares at the same PE ratio over any period of time, and they don't pay any dividends, they don't borrow any more money, so they don't increase the risk profile of the so company. So they reinvest? They reinvest all the profits. My return will be exactly equal to the return on equity that the business produced okay. over that period of time. So if I can generate, if a company can generate 15% or 20% returns on its equity, then it's certainly much better that it keeps the money than gives it to me by way of dividend. And, and what, what about business themselves? Because it was suggested by our reporter yesterday that, that uh, there you have a potential drop in the company tax rate, back of the envelope stuff, but from say 30 to 20%. Yes. You could actually manage that if you, as a government, if you dropped the the whole dividend imputation idea. Of course, because idea. there's less now, benefits. Now, to how the... would government, how would business like that? Would you think well, they would well, give dividend imputation? Well, I think that makes a lot more up? sense. I mean, I'm, I run a company, right? So I'm biased. Yeah. I would prefer a lower a lower company tax rate. Um, the fact is that reduces the benefit of the franking credit, obviously, enormously, and it would be more the greater incentive for businesses to start. Or, but, but for companies with low rates of return on equity, the argument doesn't stand. They should pay their earnings out as a dividend. Very briefly, Roger, there, there seems to be more thinking around a, a change in rates either next week or, if not, next month. Yes. Uh, you're still quite cashed up, I know. Yes. Uh, how long do you think this is going to go on for? I think it will go on a lot longer than everybody expects. The big danger, of course, is that US, the US raises rates too soon and, and we have another 1937-style um, double-dip recession and that would be much, much worse because they can't cut rates by the 3 or 4% that they have in previous recessions and where do we go from there? And, and rates are down, though. So Already. The, so everybody's still encouraged to go back into the stock market. Well, it, there's, a, there's clearly a, a disengagement between prices and performance of the underlying businesses. They're not going that well. Indeed, as we've said. Roger Montgomery, thank you very much. Pleasure, Tiki.